fabrics, not in like money, but uh, wealth in money, but like wealthy. You know, yeah. in the fabrics. Uh, that's a good look. You know, when you yeah, look well, just rich. classic and opulent. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 And you'll, but I still want to look really good and yeah. feel great. I want to know about that story when, like, because I read that when you had children, it was a pivotal moment for your career and changed your design style, or I suppose inspired this collection. What happened? Yeah. So I became a mom. My body completely changed to not being like when I was a girl, a young girl. Mm. And I thought, should I go and work? Or should I maybe come up with something that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, could maybe fit, like make me feel good? Because yeah. I've just had a baby and I want to look nice. Um, and that's what happened. I just started making dresses, mm. just one one off things. And then people started liking it. I was like, well, I'm onto something here. This is good. People like it. And then like people, it. were people just ordering from you? Like, oh, can you, if you said, oh, I made this. And you'd be, they'd be like, can you make me this? Yeah, I literally, when I was studying, I had bought little bits of fabric from all over. So I had this kist at home that I would just put little bits of fabric into and I'd make like one-offs from that. Mm. So I literally started it with nothing. That's what I did. And then people started buying and I bought 10 meters and I bought 20 meters of fabric and then it just became a big a following. Business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Because you know what, it's such an interesting story because I mean, not even having kids, as you get older as a woman, your body does change. It does. And it does, like when you become a woman. So it's so nice to know that there are designs out there where you can swathe yourself in something fabulous and glamorous. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Where do you sell your clothes? So I have um, a studio, it's actually in Deep River, mm. um, and um, I work on a sort of a, you have to make an appointment. Okay. Come and see me, I also I work from there and I sell my things from there. Okay, yeah. and it's not one size fits all kind of thing, or is it customized to each woman's body? No, I, so this is the, the great thing about it, is that I, it's in all sizes, so you can get mm. from small to Triple XL even. So it's oh, not amazing. a plus size brand, but plus size ladies can wear it. Yeah. I've got plus size ladies that are wearing my things. They look amazing in it. Just because you're plus size doesn't mean you need to be in a square box. Yeah. Which is what's happening at the moment in oh. the South African market <laughs> with fashion. Like totally. the ladies don't feel great. Yeah, there's, there's nothing no wrong variety. with having curves. It's a beautiful thing. Like if you have, if you, not just when you become a mother, a lot of ladies have got these amazing curves and it's it's fabulous and it's great. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. so we're what celebrating is, I mean, the curves. What, what is the actual issue with the South African market when it comes to fashion? Is it is it that the bigger retailers are, are not responding to the everyday South Africans' needs or are there not enough uh, designers coming up and saying, I'm offering something yeah. completely different that's custom made just for your needs and your I lifestyle? Know. I think the, that they're not listening to the client. They're not listening to the customer. The customer wants to feel good but they're still basing it on years ago's pattern making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do that. Like it's not, I cannot buy myself anything in a shop because it either doesn't fit me in my waist because I've got a tiny waist and I've got the curves there. So I need something to pull in. It's just a science that you've got to, and I've mastered it. I've come up with, I've yes. come up with something great. You've mastered it. Yeah. 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 Well, you look fantastic. <laughs> yes. And that dress oh, is you. very sexy. <laughs> I'm you. definitely coming shopping in Deep River. <laughs> and of course, we're going to be having a look at some of your collection a little bit later on the yes, show. Yes, absolutely. I'm excited. Absolutely. <laughs> so make sure you stay glued to your screen because Mel has brought some models and designs along with her and we'll be taking a look at them a little later. We'll be right back.
is double the goodness, double the happiness, made with love by Clover. Welcome back to After Dream Express. It's International Women's Day. We're very glad to have you with us on the show today. We love hanging out with you every single afternoon. Now, Clover Duo, right, is a fantastic dairy and fruit juice blend and is especially perfect for an on-the-go drink. Since Clover Duo is such a smooth drink, we couldn't help but think of smooth du duets that we love listening to as well. Because we were chatting in the ad break about some of the songs and you do not want to know what goes on behind the scenes on After Dream Express. But the singing is terrible. If you stream live on YouTube, sometimes you catch snippets of it on our YouTube You're channel. singing my be yeah, yeah. And you're going for lessons. I'm a natural. I've got a... Like how? I can I can slightly sing, but I'm not going to attempt to sing my favorite Please duet today. So, little rhyme. so my favorite duet is a. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. Oh, no, stop. No, 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 but my favorite duet is Mariah Carey and um, Whitney Houston, mm. if you believe. If you believe in life after love. No, no, no. that's no, not good. Yeah. That's shit. Sure. Here's uh, a women. <laughs> and you work on radio, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> <laughs> what, what would yours be? Mine would definitely be. I like Rihanna and Eminem. Oh, nice. Uh, you know what else is amazing? That song that Bono wrote, I think, for World Peace. And it's like, it's such a perfect day. I'm glad I spent it with you. But literally, they've got like every artist in the world singing on it. So Sting is on it. Uh, Mariah Carey, like everyone's on it. It's amazing. <laughs> that was such Google bad it. singing. Oh, my God. No, I'm a terrible singer. Singer. I'm a very good rapper. I'm just a bad singer. Yeah, you're then, a then good will, rapper. This will be your favorite. <laughs> then please rap Eminem. Uh, or or yeah, one of Rihanna. Or I can't s rap any of these rhymes without swearing. Yeah. One of my favorite things. Obviously, you guys are going to be able to play with us on this particular thing because there's a really cool Facebook post you can go check out and comment on us. Uh, comment there with your favorite duets as well. Please don't sing them on our Facebook page because oh gosh. No, please do. Or no, do. Please do. Okay, I'll do. If you, if you sing well, mine, then do so. Yeah. The first album I ever bought in my life ever. And I don't know if you if you're a millennial and you were born in the 90s. This was the first album you ever bought. Nam Encore. Right? Yes, Jay-Z Lincoln, Jay Lincoln Park. Oh, best of all time. So good. Encore, do you one want more? more? The Brooklyn, Brooklyn Roll with the, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn voice. Brooklyn. One last time, I need y'all to roll. Roll, roll, yeah. roll. And then what you go, are you, are you waiting, waiting for? for? <laughs> After me, there will be no more. Because one last time, I need you to make, roll. Or make some noise or something. <laughs> nice, nice, guys. Album. I like it. I like it a lot. There you guys have it. So our nice. favorite smooth duet songs. Join the fun. <laughs> Share with us via our social media platforms. What is your favorite duet of all time? Head over to our Facebook page, Afternoon Express, or visit our Twitter pages at Afternoon Chat as well. After the break, we sit down with another aspire, inspiring woman. She's aspiring to inspire as well. Multidisciplinary artist Dada is joining us in the loft. She works, uh, obviously, has recently featured in uh, Miami. So stay right where you are. Clover Duo is double the goodness, double the happiness, made with love by Clover.
Get a taste of the smooth island life and win big with Tropica Island of Treasure Maldives. Buy a Tropica, follow the entry details on the pack and you could win daily airtime prizes, Daniel Klein watches, American tourista luggage for your next adventure, vouchers from loot.co.za to shop the hot daily deals online and the grand prize of a Kia Picanto. For competition T's and C's, visit tropica.co.za and don't forget to watch Tropica Island of Treasure Maldives every Monday at 7.30pm on SABC3. Welcome back to Afternoon Express live on SOVC3. Thank you so much if you've just joined us. We're joined now by multidisciplinary artist Dada Kanisa, who works on a variety of mediums, including sculptured paintings, illustrations, figurines, and she has a passion for customized sneakers. She works under the name The Mighty Whale, and last year her work was featured at the Miami Art Base in the US, one of the most respected art fairs in the world. How are you? Welcome to The Love. Ah, thank you for having me. The mighty, whale. the mighty whale. Please tell Let's us what that's all about. Um, How do you relate to that and why? The mighty whale. Um, I was looking for like a, a name to go by, like in 2011. And then I saw an article on my friend's apartment, so she was just moving in. So I saw this article there about the mighty whale, and then that, that just like stuck with me. So I'm like, that's, that's the one. That's, really? Yeah. What was it about it? I didn't read the article. It was just like a headline on the article, and I was like, and then, to that. and then subsequently through your work and through your journey through your art, have you found a reason why you resonated particularly with that? I think because it's like such a, it's a powerful animal, but uh, it's very quiet. Understated. Understated. Yeah. yeah. It's very calm, yeah. it's very quiet, but it's, it has like some power. I hear you, I hear you. So you, it's, we're looking at your art just at like first glance, you're mm. passionate about dimensions, about different textures, and also somehow the classics uh, of culture. Mm -hmm. Take us through that and how those three things came to merge. I think the dimensions would be the abilities, the hand, what my hands can do, and then uh, the classic, the cultural classics would be like just growing up in Joburg, moving to Cape Town and just noticing the differences. So that was when like all the themes, all the topics, all the subject matters came together. Yeah. And they had to manifest in different dimensions through like the characters that... Um, like the characters that feature in your work. The characters that feature. This, this really <laughs> struck me because there's so many things about that piece that just immediately takes me back to a time, a place in my life, and what was going on. And geographically, it, it's, it's a setting, right? This mm -hmm. is a typical home in Soweto would have there a few go. of these pieces. Please take us through how you constructed this. Um, this one, it was, it was like, so the theme of my grad show was looking at outside spaces and inside spaces. So with inside spaces, I was looking at my own internal uh, issues or stories. So this is like, that's the father figure in a household where there, where there is no father. Like uh, the children would like congregate around the TV and that would be like the, the instructor, the father. The teacher. The teacher. Uh, so it's yeah. just that, that thing that we congregated around and we learned a lot of things. And also watching Isn't This Fun and Abo, Izo Izo, you know, you just, um, Wow. It's, 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 it became a father figure. Yeah, yeah. It'll and that's, that's a bit more contemporary, obviously, a bit more now. It's but not, it's interesting it's for me, that whole father figure idea and how many children were actually raised by TV. And some of that has been negative and positive. Mm. What are some of the issues that you use your art to work through? So it's just like things I don't understand from a personal point. Also, like things that we're trying to understand as a community. So I just look at what's happening today. So what, what draws me to, to, to the contemporary is that when I look at like a Jared Sugoto painting, I can jump into that setting, you know? Like that, I can jump into that time and understand what was happening around that time. So now me documenting what's happening now is like someone else or someone in like their grade seven class when they look at the textbook 10 years from now, they can be like, oh, that's what happened in 2017, 2018. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's like just documenting that, but with a particular agenda and 
a certain direction. Wow. Yes. So when you were studying fine arts at, at is it the McKelly School of Fine Arts? Okay, yes, yes. When, when you were experiencing this text and learning all these new and exciting things, did you immediately know what kind of art you wanted to make? Or was this like a, a, an organic process, something that you had to grow with? I, I think I was, I was interested in painting, but I couldn't major in it because, you know, some, I wanted to do sculpture more. Ah. So it was like, okay, where do these meet? So like one thing about like to stand out in the arts, in, in the art sphere is that you have to have your particular style, your own le uh, visual language. Yes. So I'd learned that from like studying animation and uh, looking at how people have uh, created styles to make their animated clips different from the rest. Mm. So with that in mind, I went to Michele's and learned how to sculpt, learned how to work with wood. So these stories had, you know, uh, it, it added dimension to the stories. Yeah. And also it was like, okay, I want to make something that can't be duplicated. And if it, even if it can, it's not worth the time to actually duplicate it and make it exactly that way. Yeah, absolutely. So it was like part of like creating a style and just um, learning about different materials, yeah. exploring like multiple dimensions. Absolutely. Mm. So speaking of duplicity, I mean, do you think South Africa has developed its own unique visual language? Or do you think we're still finding our feet and trying to kind of find a, a common thread in that multiplicity? I think it was there, like, uh, maybe f it started 50 years ago when they documented paintings by George Pemba, paintings, yeah. um, you know, sculptures by Noria. It's, it's very, when you look at that, even the color, the colors that are used, it's very like South African, like, a, like the yellow sun. Yeah. It has a warmness to it. Mm -hmm. So it was, that, that was what like stuck out to me as like the South African aesthetic, you know? So it was, it was there, but now it's coming back where people are, you know, coming back to, to, to what they know, like that room. Right. Together, yeah, know? absolutely. And coming back to, to what, we understood as um, our own experiences. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's intersecting with contemporary culture today, yeah. Well, I absolutely love your work and I love your sneakers. And I'm going to go you? check them out and have a bit of a shop myself. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so yesterday we looked back on the successful world record attempt from Clover Cremonese from the past weekend when they assembled the world's longest line of sandwiches, four kilometers long. And after the break, we sit down with the Cremonese brand managers to chat more about the experience. Next week on Tropica Island of Treasure Maldives. It's all about the brains and brawn, mighty muscles and quizzical questions. But it's not all fun in the sun as the first game has teams seeking revenge. So the green team's only one with three bottles and I mean revenge is sweet. Yeah. Which team can solve the riddle first? I'm like, what's going on? And who will hang in there? You're gonna have to use these. <laughs> Catch season eight of Tropica Island of Treasure Mondays at 7.30 p.m. on SABC3. The stage is yours.
mayonnaise is the only mayonnaise with clover cream. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, this fabulous International Women's Day. Now, have you ever made sandwiches using over 8,000 baguettes? Ever seen 2,600 kilometers, or no, kilograms rather, of grated cheese? How about 800 kilograms of lettuce and 500 liters of clover cremonese? This is what it took to cover the incredible clover cremonese team to break the Guinness World Record for the longest line of sandwiches. Joining us in the studio today with full bragging rights, we've got the Clover Cremonese brand group manager, Edith Molepo, and Clover Cremonese junior brand manager, Solofelo Lesaje. Did I say that right? <laughs> Lesaje. <laughs> Lesaje. I'm learning, I'm learning. And of course, they will be giving us the inside scoop on what went down this past Saturday at Moponia Mall in Soweto. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank I was at the first attempt in yes. Soweto last year and it got rained out and this year you really did fly the flag put South Africa on the map again by winning the the world record what does it mean for Clover Cremonese to achieve this oh this is such a big achievement for us and for the brand for Clover yeah. itself I mean Jeannie like you said you were there last year um, our mayonnaise is only eight months old so yeah. it was important for us to launch it to South Africans in the most unique and innovative way as the product is. Yeah. yeah. One thing that I did realize is that the planning was immaculate mm. from last year and obviously this year as well. Mm. And the sandwiches weren't just, I mean, it wasn't just a, you know, a slice of cheese in a bread roll. They were really good sandwiches as well. So what, co what goes into planning an event of this caliber? And are there any guidelines and specifications for the to, to make to get to the world record yeah. so firstly imagine making 32,000 sandwiches I, 32, I made a few last year <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> like five <laughs> so I mean firstly it was important for us to follow properly the guidelines from from the Guinness world record yeah. which were very strict on what to do and what not to do um, I, it was very important that we source the right ingredients, which is obviously our clover cheddar cheese and our cream on uh, yeah. the right bread, the right lettuce. And lastly, it was very, very important that we have a strong team and we uh, use our clover employees and the partners, our partners such as Joe Public and Cordova to help us build mm. the sandwich, the, who actually showed us that uh, working together is way better. Totally. Yeah. And of course, it was received well all over the place. Yes. I mean, you guys were training on Twitter. Mm. And of course, you had amazing ambassadors there as well. Mm. You had Samizi and Miss Cosmo. What does it mean to you? And how do you think their involvement increased to the um, splendor, I suppose, of the day? Well, Ginny, it was very important for us to have uh, people such as Samizi there, um, DJ Miss Cosmo, because for our audience sitting at home, they, some of them couldn't come to Maponyamu. Yeah. So it was very important to keep them updated on the runnings of the day on social media using the hashtag um, Cremonese GWR. And it also allowed us to have them there to entertain the crowds. Miss Cosmo kept the audience moving mm -hmm. and we had Somizi there who loves the brand, he yeah. lives the brand. So it was very important for us. Yeah. How does it feel to have achieved this award? Because I mean, it puts, I mean, it, it's amazing for the brand, but now what are you going to, what are you going to do next year to top it? Oh, <laughs> you know, just imagine this is only the beginning. The brand is eight, eight months old. Yeah. It already broke the Guinness World Record. So imagine what's to come. I cannot say, but just follow the brand, follow the hashtags, yeah. buy the product. There's more to come. Definitely. I mean, it feels like it's been in our lives forever because I don't know, I can't <laughs> eat anything without a little bit of cream oh, on it. <laughs> because we get it here in the loft all the time. And now it's just, you know, you can't have a meal without it. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. It's been absolutely wonderful having you here. And congratulations on Thank your you. achievement. Thank Thanks. You. What, by the way, what happened to all the sandwiches once, like afterwards? So what we decided to do with the sandwiches is that every, uh, the audience that actually attended the event got a share. They got an opportunity yeah. to taste our cream yeah. and, and the rest was distributed to our charities uh, such as uh, Choc, Choc and uh, oh, Barra Hospital, oh, that's Gift of the Givers. So everybody got a share. And you know, Clover, we believe in spreading the love, which we oh, did with that spreading is great. the sandwich. That's yeah. really, really lovely. I look forward to being involved in next year's initiative. Well done. Now that's how South Africa made history with Clover Cremonese.
If you feel like you missed out on all the action, check out the social media platforms for more info. On Facebook, Cremonese, Twitter, at Cremonese, Instagram, Cremonese, and on YouTube, it's hashtag Cremonese GWR. Cremonese is the only mayonnaise with clover cream. Made with love by Clover. It was such a cool campaign. It was really cool to see South Africans come together and obviously to put ourselves on the map, which was really awesome. Let's meet our next guest on the show, Butlesi Teller. He had a dream of bringing movies to the township and making the cinema experience more accessible to his community. An entrepreneur at heart, he funded his studies by starting a very small business called the Kylie Chir Bin Clean Project. Unfortunately, fees were merely too high and Butler was forced to drop out. This didn't dishearten him and he started using the money from his business to host cinema screenings in his community. Today, under the name of Ekasi Cinema, he brings the magic of the movies to the people of Kailicha. Dude, I always love catching up with you because your story is just amazing. Thank you very much. Let's first talk about that journey of having to fund your own high school education and your relationship with your mom. She was unhappy with you cleaning bins. How did all of that happen? Okay, for me, like I was studying, I had passion of studying and graduating to make my mom proud. So for me, I didn't have any money to, to go further with my studies. Mm. Then I didn't want to sit home and do nothing. So I started cleaning pins for the people in my community. Yeah. But I knew my passion that uh, I didn't want to clean pins for the rest of my life. My aim was to raise funds so that I can bring cinemas to the township because re I realized that there is no cinemas in the township. So if I can host movies for the kids, I can engage them and I can also like entertain them with mm. African movies. Yeah, you mentioned engaging the, the, these youngsters, which I think is such a vital part of it. You wanted to bring movies that weren't just the you know, typical blockbusters. Yes. You wanted to bring films that were gonna teach kids about being the best versions of themselves and empowering, uplifting them. Yes. How do you select the movies? Okay, for me, I get films from Triggerfish Animation and also from Video Vision. So those are inspiring African movies and I believe like we can tell our own African stories. Mm. So the kids, they can watch the movies. I don't show like blockbuster movies. I, I want to show them like something that they can learn and, and grab yeah. something from. And it's so, uniquely South African, yeah. Yeah, so I enjoy hosting for them and yeah. they also like the movies. So tell us how it works. So how does it actually work? Where did the cinemas pop up? How does it work? Where did you get your equipment from? Okay, for me, I, I got sponsorship from Red Bull. Uh, to buy the equipment and also video vision entertainment they also supported me with the content I needed to screen mm. so for me I, I, I take advantage of the school holidays maybe if it's a human rights day then I will select one of the movies that will relate with the holiday then I will screen for the kids and it's free for them and I, I just sell popcorns and snacks for them. That's, That's how so I make cool. mine. And obviously the idea is that you broadcast these on the back of people's buildings and things. So yes. you find whatever location you need to do to yes. make it central. Yes. And that's how it works. Yes. You mentioned this dream earlier on, that the, the cleaning the bins was obviously not the end goal. It was a, a means to get to this, this end. Yes. What is the big dream and are you there yet? Oh, I'm not there yet, but I, I'm glad I have the whole setup for the equipment and I'll be glad like if people can book the cinemas like my equipment so that I can show the movies in their own township so that will bring money to me and also give me strength to host for the kids in my area. Yeah. But for me, my dream will be hosting like a road show in South Africa and just show movies from Cape Town maybe to Joburg yeah. and just show African movies. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk a bit about the entrepreneurial journey of doing this because clearly you, you're a guy with a vision and you want to go and achieve something and you've done so much at your age. You're what, 22 now? Yes, 22. Years. Man, at your age I was still running around trying to figure out like what, <laughs> what degree I'm going to study, maybe not, you know, like yes. do you, what do you want to do with your life and you've clearly had a very clear vision what was the entrepreneurial journey like? Is it easy to start a business in South Africa? Uh, it's not easy to, to, to start a business in South Africa, I can say. But for me, like, you have to take a risk. If mm. you, you know you need to have a passion first, so if you're doing something that you love, then you, it's going to be easy. And also you need to make use of the internet to like, mm. do a research, a proper research, and also go for incubation programs so that you can learn about entrepreneurship. Yeah. That also helps because I also have some mentors now, so it's much yeah. easier. Yeah. You mentioned the financial stress of having to not get through your education, having to try and fund your education yourself through, yes. through the, the bin cleaning project. And um, is starting a business financially viable for you? Are you surviving on your own incomes? And should other kids who are maybe struggling to find the finances to go to school do the same thing? Okay, for, for me, like, uh, I'm, I'm struggling to, to pay my, my, my university fee, but for me, I always, like, if I have small money, then I'll always put on, on to pay the back the university. But for me, like, you mustn't wait to graduate. If you still make it, maybe you're doing a part-time job while you're studying, 
just go and pay the money mm. like soon. Soon mm. is better, mm. yes. And what's been the response like from these kids who you're interacting with and engaging with? How have they responded to having a cinema in, in the townships? For me, like even if maybe I'm, I'm having a meeting, maybe I'm not doing a screening, they always ask a screening, when is the next screening? So I'm glad like they like the movies and I always want to show for them. I can't wait, mm. maybe if it's going to be a weekend, then when they see me with a projector, then they know that I'm going to host a movie for them. And also like I want to take it to many townships in my area just to inspire them with movies because I believe like bringing community to one space, like we mm. can also create like a space where people can talk about the issues that we are faced with. Yeah, such as what? What do you think are the most vital conversations that should be had in communities using film? Like to start your own business like we can also teach kids from a young age and also also to save teach kids to save at the young age so that they can grow up with the right mentality on how to manage money mm. and also how to get job if you don't get, you don't get a job you can also start your own business mm. and so if you could give words then to the young you let's say you were five years ago before all this had begun and you could give words to the young you what would be your words of wisdom my, my word of wisdom will be you have to do something that you love because like if you don't do something that you do, you don't love, like you will get depressed. So you must always try to find your passion. That's the only key that I will get. Mm. And also try to get the experience and go to workshops, meet with people. I think that helps a lot mm. for the people. Networking, networking, networking yes. is a big one. Yes. Awesome, Gute. Like we really are glad to have you on the show today. I'm hoping more yes. of these films can make their way to these townships to continue to you know, give kids an opportunity to see the, the world out there, to be exposed to, yes. to more things. I mean, if people want to get involved and help you along the journey, can they just find you on social media? Yes, for me, I'm active on social media. If you just search Gute Citella, you can also see my articles there. And I'll be glad if people can just book the cinemas so that mm. I can I can also make a profit so that I can screen for these kids for free because the movies are for free for the kids. Stunning. So for me, like you can go Bukhasi Taylor on all social media. Okay. And even though your mom said, no, don't go along this journey, please go and you know focus on something else. I don't want you cleaning bins. Do you feel like you made the right decision? For me, I feel like I've made the right decision because okay. even with cleaning bins, like I bring the, the need of hygiene yeah. and the awareness and also I have guys that I create employment for them. So for me, I, I love both of my business. It's amazing. At 22 <laughs> years old, South Africa, this man, Butler, is changing the world. If you want to get in touch, perhaps you've got something to offer. Perhaps you're a part of this journey. You want to do something similar. and want to have a conversation. Perhaps he could be your mentor. Go and find him on all, on all the social media details. They're also posted on our own. So if you can find us, Afternoon Express on Facebook, Afternoon Chat on Twitter. And we'll also post his details on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. It's so inspiring celebrating young people with these amazing, amazing stories. And it's exclusively here on Afternoon Express. Lots of fun to be had after this. Clover Duo is double the goodness, double the happiness, made with love by Clover. And it's obviously fun because we've been keeping our vocals smooth with Clover Duo by sharing our favorite duet songs of all time. We've asked you to share your very own favorite duets on social media. We've been taking all of those comments throughout the show. It was so cool to see lots of them because uh, some of the comments came through about the fact that us are, the, are their favorite duo, even though it's a trio, but... Bonnie and I are definitely the favorite duo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. That wasn't very smooth. And Clover's smooth, all right? <laughs> yeah, so okay. some cool comments came through yeah. our social sites as well. What are some of the duets that were mentioned? So some of the other ones, obviously, they were singing along to your ones. They definitely said Rihanna was a big one, but Rihanna and yeah. Drake, not the Eminem one. Yes. Rihanna and Drake Love was the big Rihanna one. Rihanna and Drake as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that was really cool. Mm -hmm. 50 Cent, mm -hmm. Maroon 5 and Eminem. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That was a big Love one. Yeah. And they also brought through some, like Whitney Houston, who also popped in there a couple of times as well. Uh, and some of the other comments that I found that I thought was quite cool was everyone was kind of singing along to ours. Mm -hmm. Sipo Gazi said, Beyonce and Luther Vandross yeah. was a big one. I don't even know that one. Do you know it? No. No. Oh, <laughs> and, oh, and also not long ago, at the end of last year, we had Tomorrow Day and DJ Zinsley on the show. Brilliant. That yeah. was lovely. Really so Kaniso said DJ Zinsley and Tomorrow Day, and so many other people said it. Fana and Mayua also said the same thing, Zinsley and Tomorrow oh, there's Day. There's so many local duos that I love, though. Who are my favorite ones? I can't remember now. You know when it's on the tip of your tongue? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Spiso says, I'll go for Drake and Rihanna, uh, yeah. because Riri is my crush, Veleza. Uh, Ike Tang says, you guys in studio are the best duo ever, Shem. Sweet. 
love it. And then also Joe says you stole his his uh, duet. He stole his duo. Joe, it's ours now. <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian <laughs> says Pink and Nate a Roos. Yes, just give me a reason. Mm. And he says Danilo got me singing Nam Encore, Lincoln Park, lol. <laughs> yeah, obviously, <laughs> as we've always these songs have come up, we started singing them. Um, another one said Simpiwe Dana uh, featuring Mtwagaza and Twagazi. Um, oh, I didn't know Mtwagazi cool and Simpiwe Dana. I also didn't know that there was a yeah, collab there. Uh, Abuti says Chris Brown and Bow Wow, surely like mine. I don't like Chris Brown. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> we're not, not right. Chris Brown girls. It's not right. But to it's like so Chris funny. Brown. It's called an earworm <laughs> when you get a song in your head and then you can't think of anything else, and then you just can only hear that song all day. Mm. An and earworm. It's, so, it's called an earworm, and it's something subconscious that makes you think of the song, whether you've but heard it or not. But it's usually the song you least want to remember, isn't it? I know. Mm. It's usually one of the, like an, an annoying, catchy one. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. so funny because we were singing um, Nam Encore just da, 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 now. Da, 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 Walked past da, da, a cameraman da. just now and he was singing it to himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shame, we've done it to him. He's going to have that earworm all day. <laughs> and on a local note, final comment came through from Nadine Daniels who says, Craig Lucas and Paxton Phillies, the song that they did together, obviously they redid uh, Craig Lucas's song as well. Um, Go ahead and smother me now. Oh, no? Never heard right. of it. Those are some of your really great <laughs> duet song choices. Thanks for sharing them along with us on our Facebook page. If you haven't yet done it, go and send them through to our Facebook page, Afternoon Express. Coming up after the break will be lots of action on Afternoon Express. Clover Duo is double the goodness, double the happiness, made with love by Clover. Before we sneak to our commercial break, I have to reveal the results on our poll. We're asking you a question on Twitter. Do you contribute to the development and growth of your community? And the options were, yes, I assist consistently, uh, or I struggle due to time, or I lack the resources. And the majority winner was, I lack the resources at 60%. Um, and then coming in second was, yes, I assist consistently at 31%. So thank you so much to everybody who said that you were. I'm so keen to find out what those stories no, are. No, that's not true, because sometimes your resource can be time. Sometimes yeah all you need to donate to your community is time. Is time. Some of your time. Especially mm. if you don't have the money or other resources. Yeah, I but think. the poll will still live for another couple of minutes. Yeah. Uh, I think it's up to 24 hours or so. So go get your votes in. If you are one of the people who are doing amazing work in your community, share the story with us and go and vote in that poll. After the break, curvy-friendly fashion designer Mel Brooks showcases some of her latest collection. So don't go anywhere.
presenter search on three is back on SABC3. Do you have the personality and the stylish flair to be absolutely unforgettable? Can you dazzle with a winning smile, turn on the charm and take our breath away? Are you ready to be South Africa's next television superstar? If your answer is a resounding yes, then SABC3 presents this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to take your place in the spotlight and own the stage as the new presenter of Top Billing, Afternoon Express or The Expresso Morning Show. Start a new journey as the face of the progressive SABC3 brand on television and beyond. If you think you're ready, then the stage is yours at the Countrywide Presenter Search on three auditions taking place in Port Elizabeth on the 25th of March, Cape Town on the 7th and 8th of April, Durban on the 14th and 15th of April, and Johannesburg on the 20th, 21st and 22nd of April. Visit the Presenter Search on three website, Facebook and Twitter for more details. With SABC3 and Presenter Search on three, the stage is yours. <laughs> Welcome Ooh. back to Afternoon Express. <laughs> now she's just returned from the UK where she showcased her work at London Fashion Week and now we get to enjoy it right here mm. in the Afternoon Express loft. We're of course back with Mel Brooks and she's brought some of her designs to show us. Okay, so this is the London collection. It's a few pieces, so yeah. So what are we having a look at here? Okay, Ooh. so this is the first look. This we went for a bit of... Um, uh, of the lace on the shoulder, a very classic clean look, but the fur adds the the luxe. The yeah. 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 The luxe yeah. yeah, and then a bit of uh, funkiness with the colour shoe to give it that, because it does have a bit of a sporty vibe yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah. kind of fabrics you're using, what kind of fabric are you using? Yeah, for I love using like really this? good quality fabric. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's like a that's just a, a nice knit. It's lined mm. and a nice fur shawl. So